So I'm Alex from XY Sense, and through my 15 years in the industry, I've seen all different types of sensors to help workplace space usage. Over this time, understanding utilization has been a top problem for real estate executives, but now it's even more of an issue. Organizations are experiencing the challenge of a new hybrid world, along with low utilized offices and all that downsizing pressure. At XY Sense, we make a sensor that is in this new, relatively new category, which is called area sensors. These sensors are typically installed in the ceiling and look down into the workplace. And they often look a little bit like a smoke detector or a wireless access point. The technology inside area sensors varies in the market. Sensors range from thermal or heat technology to Wi-Fi or to computer vision. At XY Sense, we use computer vision. And that means we've trained an artificial intelligence algorithm offline to understand and recognize people. We then deploy that algorithm to the sensor. Area sensors are typically able to understand and see people and pinpoint their location onto a floor plan. Most area sensors are anonymous without identifying who the individuals are. They're able to recognize people across any different type of space, whether it's breakout, kitchen areas, traditional work points or conference rooms. Generally, the coverage range of an area sensor is larger than a single desk. So when we saw before from Travis with the under desk sensors, that's a one to one. Um, with an area sensor, you can put it up and it can see a range of things. In fact, whatever's in range, it'll be able to identify the people that are uh, using that space. And what that means is typically you need fewer of them to cover your entire space. Lastly, different area sensors have different capture rates, often dependent on whether they're battery or not. So varying that from real time to potentially up to five to 10 minutes, taking a sighting every five to 10 minutes. Generally at XY Sense, our mantra is the more real time, the better, as it means you can see, verify and trust the data the sensors are capturing. As we've already seen, there are many different types of sensors to measure space usage. This pyramid shows how different sensors fit in. Often a common first step is actually to use badge swipe data or observation studies. Badge swipe data is usually only available for badging in and not badging out. And it doesn't tell you which individual spaces in the building are being used. Observation studies or bed checks where people walk around with a clipboard typically are short term only and don't give you a bigger picture. Moving down the pyramid, desk space utilization, which we just saw from Travis, most commonly through PIR sensors, they give you a binary view of which desks are used that can be in real time as well but they don't extend potentially to collaboration spaces, breakout spaces, those sorts of spaces. And then moving further down the pyramid, room sensors either, they can count the number of people entering and exiting the room. Uh, they can rely on people to check in or else risk having the booking canceled, or you can have pucks at fixed locations under the tables. And finally, area sensors give you all of the above like we described, but also the flexibility to understand all different types of spaces and count the number of people using those spaces, as well as understand where people have moved. With the rich data set of information being captured from area sensors, you're actually able to get a more complete picture about overall space usage from soft seating areas all the way through to standard work points. The overall coverage enables tools to fuel new hybrid workplaces, understanding neighborhood and team usage, as well as predicting capacity trends. Real-time area sensors can be tied into space reservation tools, similar to the desk sensors that we saw earlier, to automatically check in bookings without the need for a QR code scanning or launching up an app on your phone. Especially with real-time area sensors, where sightings are occurring every two seconds, this provides wayfinding feedback instantly for a better workplace experience. Lastly, as sensors are not tied to an individual piece of furniture, they're actually able to cope with many types of changes in layout without the need for physical maintenance. Alex, quick question for you. I just I want to make sure because it's something Travis highlighted. Tell us about how these sensors uh, maintain that layer of anonymity and not being anonymous. I can't say the word. <laughs> uh compared to say what he just went through with the par um i think that'd be great for everybody to, to hear sure so the anonymity in fact that's how we actually for us personally anonymity and privacy is one of the biggest pillars and requirements for having utilization sensors 
Um, so we call ourselves XY Sense because only anonymous XY coordinates leave the sensor. The technology underlying, it's trained to understand and recognize people, but it doesn't identify who the people are. And as all that's leaving our sensors is anonymous XY coordinates, that really uh, instills confidence and trust in how the system works. So just to declare my bias up front and recognizing that XY Sense does have its own area sensor, I think it's still useful to talk about some of the things to look out for when considering area sensors. So firstly, the coverage of a sensor is really important. And if you think about it, the smaller the coverage, the more, you, the more sensors you need to install. And that drastically contributes to the total cost of ownership. Um, we've seen sensor installations where we, there's a requirement for two to three times the number of sensors because of the coverage. And when you add that up across an enterprise or a building, it really stacks up. Um, some area sensors are based on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi usage. And these devices actually rely on a person carrying a device, such as a cell phone or having an app installed, etc. We believe it's best to have a sensor that understands where people are, regardless of what device they're carrying or who they are, because it gives you a complete picture of coverage of the space with less gaps. Another important factor to consider with area sensors is how real time is a data capture? Can you see what the data is being captured or is it hidden in aggregations and delayed? So if someone asked you how um, many people did you have in your office last week or yesterday, it's quite hard to remember. And so many times in the past, I've seen questions on utilization reporting uh, where people actually question the data and say it's wrong. And it's really hard to verify that unless you've got something in real time that you can pull up and show people and then they can actually see that it is exactly what they say. An interesting one is battery versus wired. And uh, when you're considering any, these sorts of sensors, the open area sensors, they actually consume a little bit more energy than the desk PIR sensors. And as a result, uh, that's why you get the um, extended, uh, maybe sightings once every five, 10 minutes versus every two seconds in real time. So something to consider for battery powered open area sensors is they actually drain their energy based on the number of people or traffic underneath. So they'll run out of energy or run out of battery at different times which means you've got this logistics problem of having to swap batteries out. Also to consider is the sustainability aspect of batteries. A large de deployment for a multinational could actually result in half a tonne to a tonne of battery waste every two to three years. Having accurate data from area sensors is the first hurdle. Second to that is powerful analytics that can provide meaningful insights in an easily accessible way. So I'd encourage you to look out for the depth of data is there reporting on teams, neighborhoods in an agile workplace? Uh, does the analytics provide insights and recommend recommendations into creating the most optimized workplace experience? Things like that, which delve into going further than just presenting you the information and then leaving you to do the, uh, the homework to work out exactly what to do with the result. And last but not least, as Ben already mentioned, privacy and security is really critical. So like I said, with XY, we believe privacy is almost the, one of the top considerations for selecting the right sensor. For our sensors, the technology underlying, like I said, is computer vision. And all that leaves our sensor is anonymous XY coordinates of people, hence our name, XY Sense. So we've built them from the ground up to instill this confidence. And not every area sensor is actually created equal here. Other sensors actually allow images to leave the sensor for calibration and configuration on site. So you can see images of the office. And for us, that was a definite no-no and something that is a point I would recommend to look out for.